Our next guest is a Tony-winning actor you know from shows such as Masters of Sex and Impeachment, American Crime Story. She stars in Be Positive, which airs two new back-to-back -back episodes this Thursday, starting at 9 p.m. on CBS and Paramount+. Plus. Let's take a look. While I have you all, let's make a mental note to check the smoke alarms next week. It's battery changing season. What, what? <laughs> Gina, we don't usually talk work here. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, um, we're off the clock. Mm -hmm. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, I'm actually taking Monday off. We're going on a hiking trip with some friends. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. Just remember to put in your time card tomorrow because they're due on Friday. Now, Gabby, you sent that email to everyone, right? I could check, but I sent it from my work computer, and we're not at work. Mm. Starting to feel like it. Please welcome back to the show our friend Annalie Ashford. How are you, Annalie? Hello. Oh, it's so good to see you. It's so good to see you as well. I do wish you were here. And I, yeah, there we go. There you go. Oh, oh thank God, you. God, what a warm hug. <laughs> you, uh, so doing this sitcom, I imagine one of the draws, being a stage actor like you are, is getting to do a show in front of a live studio audience. But because of COVID, a lot of the episodes you taped were just in front of the crew. How was that? Um, I give the crew baked goods and alcohol. <laughs> I wish. Um, you know, thank God, they're a wonderful audience. And hey, if the crew laughs, you know, if the crew laughs, then you know it went well. Yes. Um, but sometimes I feel like I'm I'm doing like an, an eternal Wednesday matinee. Like yeah. the Wednesday matinee that won't end. Um, but that's, hey, I'm so happy to be making somebody laugh somewhere. You just hope that it goes through the ether in the land of television, and I imagine the laughs. But I do remember on stage having one particular Wednesday matinee where it was so quiet that it felt like nobody was out there. And when we looked in the front row, there was one woman who was taking a full-out nap. And it was, it was a three-act play, so it was a long play, and she took a long nap. And then you know, you start to wonder if she was alive. I, she woke up at the end. The applause at the end of the show woke her up. But you know, it sort of feels like that sometimes. That's you very, like that? that's very rude for everybody to clap and wake up that poor woman. I mean, yeah. hello. She was having a lovely respite. So a three act play, those intermissions must be so weird with you and the other actors when you realize how quiet it is. Do you talk about it backstage? Is there like a real like, ee? Immediately. Like the first thing you do when you get off stage when you're doing a show is go, what's happening with this audience? Whether they're good or bad. You know, they're like, I only wish the audience knew how much we talked about them. And there's like, you know, a thousand of them, but they are one in our mind. Yeah. You know how sometimes there's a Q&A after a show where the audience can ask the cast? You should do a Q&A where you, the cast, get to ask the audience some questions. Like, what did you think you were buying a ticket for? <laughs> Why did you take melatonin before coming? <laughs> Could you have waited? So you, yeah, so uh, your character in the show uh, owns and runs a nursing home. As a young performer, you actually found your way to performing at nursing homes. How did that happen and did you enjoy that experience? You know, it's such a strange story that I like forgot happened until a couple of weeks into working out of the show. I was like, oh, you know what? I feel like I've been here before because I have. <laughs> um, when I was a kid, I danced at this amazing dance studio and to practice numbers before dance competitions we would play nursing homes so we would do like 30 dance numbers at these nursing homes and sometimes they were like very risque like I remember the older girls did a Janet Jackson number and they wore like bustiers and like ripped up jeans and like door frames and it was it was a big hit at the nursing home <laughs> um, and I would sing and I remember at the end of one of our gigs, uh, the director of the nursing home came up and asked me if I wanted to do my own set. So I came back with my karaoke machine and I had a, you know, a little mic attached to a boom box. And I had about 15 songs and little karaoke tapes in order. And I wrote my own jokes and I wore a tuxedo. <laughs> Why? Why did that happen? It was very uncomfortable. I think they for must everybody have else. loved you, right? They loved me, but they were like, why is this small woman doing this show for us? <laughs> <laughs> and I was 10. But now you have, is it true that you have always uh, befriended people that were maybe a, a generation or two above your age group? 
Yes, you know, I've always thought it's sort of obnoxious when people are like, I'm an old soul. <laughs> but I, you know, I sort of, I've always connected with people who are of an older generation than I am. And I, you know, I'm working with a bunch of legends with the capital L right now. Anytime Linda Lavin will tell me any story, I sit down at her feet. Um, but yeah, we used to live next door actually to my great grandma when I was growing up. So my cousin Tyler and I would walk home from school and we'd go next door and hang out with grandma Ashford for a couple hours. Um, and she, we were in charge of giving her her medicine and she somehow would make a game out of throwing it across the room because she just really didn't want to take it. And so we were sort of in charge of like finding her pills. <laughs> we find, they're, they're, over the years, we found them in the couch. We found them under glasses. <laughs> they were in the plants. Part of me was like, why are we making her take this? I, you know, it's probably like extra magnesium. Like, what's the point? <laughs> Uh, you have a, a, we've talked to before about uh, your son, Jack. I think the last time you heard, he was maybe only one or two years old. He's five and a half now. Oh God. How yes, is he I doing? Still, I, I no longer give him milk from my breasts. That, that was what was happening. We've, we've last crossed the there. milk threshold. Congratulations. We, yes. Yeah, we're done doing that. Thank God. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, he's doing great. He's so big now, which is crazy. He's really, really, really into superheroes. He's super into Spider-Man right now, specifically. Um, Does he know like, you are in show business? Does he know his mom is an actor? It's just started happening, which is so banana. I mean, you know, it's like such a funny thing being in the business and then growing up not in the business. You know, I can't imagine what it feels like to have a kid who just like has a parents who are friends with actors that they see in things, you know, he'll be like, mom, do you, now he started being like, do you know them in every movie that we watch? You know, and I don't, <laughs> but um, now when I fight with my husband or a couple days ago, I got really upset about something. And I was like, I don't understand what's happening. I, and he was like, mom, are you crying? Or are you working on a scene? That's literally what he said. He'll go, are you running lines when we fight? And we just go, yes. We've got a big scene coming up. That's so Your father and I are rehearsing. Um. <laughs> oh, we're doing Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf again. <laughs> um, I was lucky enough uh, to see you on stage uh, doing uh, the great Stephen Sondheim musical Sunday in the Park with George. I can only imagine, like all of us, uh, that you were deeply affected by his passing. What was your, do you have a fond memory with Stephen you'd be willing to share? Absolutely. I mean, I have so many, but um, one thing that keeps coming back to me is how, as an artist, he was never done. You know, one of the most famous lines in Sunday in the Park with George is anything you do, let it come from you, then it will be new. Give us more to see. And, you know, for all of us who want to make art, that should sort of be a mantra. And it was for him. And the art was never done. You know, he was always giving us notes, always giving himself notes. And I always think it's sort of magical. He loved puzzles. He loved word games. And on opening night, he gave us all a puzzle. Um, and so I just feel like he left us all of these beautiful puzzles to keep figuring out. You know, that's sort of his legacy. These shows are like exquisite works of art that um, we can keep working out, you know? It is a, it, an incredible gift that he left us with all that work that we can continue to enjoy. And it is always so wonderful to talk to you. Thanks so much for making the time, Emily. Oh, my pleasure. Good to see you. Bye. <laughs> Emily Asbert, everybody. Two new back-to-back -back episodes of Be Positive aired this Thursday starting at 9 p.m. on CBS and Paramount+. Plus.